was too beautiful. Delete it. Don't tell anyone where we went today. You really have to push even harder. <laughs> I'm stuck. Brain freeze. I'm almost ready. I'm just gonna finish my Swedish cinnamon one. I've been competing on the Freeride World Tour for five years now. And there's only one thing missing. Winning in Verbier. And this season, I'm going all in. This is my road to Verbier. Back in Åre, we are going to talk about the most important thing in skiing. Where and how you stand on your skis and how you use them. Uh, which is the, it's definitely the foundation of freeride skiing too. And today we're meeting up with my friend Matthias, expert airplane racer and expert freerider. Uh, so it's going to be a really interesting day skiing and talking about how you do it. I mean, what's, what's impressive uh, when you see Becker Ross especially, I think, uh, when it's that steep and you see the skiers who ski really well, how they control the speed uh, on the top, they're having all the high speed turns and yes, before all this big cliff, they can really take down the speed pretty fast and you see they're, they're in control. So this is what we, what we talk about with staying in control in between your features in a run. This one, right after the landing of this cliff is probably the hardest turn during this run. So you want to land good and directly start to turn. And that might be the hardest part. So the landing and then take, you're having the super G turn, take it down the speed and go out over the second one. Uh, it's cool. That's a cool mountain. It is. Scary, but cool. Yeah. Ooh, nice angle. Okay, that's controlled. I want to be able to do that. Oh, no. It's so much easier when it flat and out. Yeah, but in general it was really good, but you could see you lost the grip in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you really have to push even harder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to say with those skis. <laughs> when it gets steeper, even skiing this slope here, it's pretty steep in the beginning. So if you if you hang back on your heels, it's super hard to, to make good looking turns or take your speed down into a cliff or anything. So that's something I, I, I have to push myself into, even skiing this. And you really have to be strong in the core yeah. to be forward. I need to go back to pizza fries. Like this. This season the tour is uh, gonna focus on the Europe's, European stops uh, and my initial plan was to get some good big, big mountain riding in the Alps before the comps uh, but due to the current situation the pandemic I feel it's a lot more comfortable to stay here in Sweden and we got some really nice mountains here so we're gonna head out there and see what we can find. On our way up uh, to Storsyla, the big sun. This is, that's what this yeah, Swedish fjell is called. I've never been here, so we got Martin as a guide today, uh, who knows this area really well. So it's gonna be super fun to to uh, see something new and hopefully have some really good ski runs as well. This is like the big, the first bigger ski tour mission I do this season. And it's always like, before I go into a free world tour season with competitions coming up, it's, it's always stressful. Like you, you, you want to ski more, but then obviously always things come in your way and you feel you get more and more stressed. Can I do that? Or is enough time? And so it, now today, a beautiful day like this, it feels really good to be finally be out in the bigger mountains uh, and be able to get 
maybe on some exposure and get a little used to that, uh, to feel comfortable and then it's much easier also to handle pressure from competition mode, like having to, to push yourself. I mean, I think it's typical before season starts, it's yeah. always, I think most of the athletes are stressed. Yeah. And because you're going through and like you said, you have I trained enough, have I enough ski days and but for me also it changed between the seasons. Some seasons it was more stress and some people were more calm. But in the end it's more mentally thing. You have to just sit down, think what you did this summer, yeah. all the days you did before also before the race. And in the end you really realize how much training and effort you put down. So you just have to be relaxed and trust yourself. And there's also always the thought like you, especially with Instagram, you see all your colleagues or competitors, they're out like sending it, they only post triple backflips and like, skiing steep lines and so on. That, that helps to build up the stress as well. Yeah, for sure. Everyone is training so much harder than yourself, yeah, you yeah. think. <laughs> but in the end, yeah, the one who's not talked the most is probably performing most when the competition's on. Rain freeze! Ja. <laughs> Alright. Top of stor sola. Top of stor sola. Stor sola. Yes. Top. So nice. Beautiful. Yeah. So there's some slough. Yeah. But no uh, propagation. Yeah. Seems to be a lot of snow. A lot of snow. Wow, it's so beautiful now. We get to a look, the first look down into the chute here. It's beautiful and the snow is amazing. Three, four, go! Good one. Oh, I found a cave. I thought I was uh, Christopher Tudel, and I got a really nice uh, flip. You almost landed a side flip. Yeah. Mid turn. <laughs> Look, looked actually pretty good. Yeah. Stylish. <laughs> <laughs> From the beginning it was pretty steep and tight cooler and uh, the snow was really deep and then open up down here with some high speed turns. Uh, a cool run, pretty technical and uh, fun. Our plan now for the second run is to skin up to the beginning of that chute up there and if it's too steep we might boot pack up. Otherwise I prefer to use my skins. It's easier to walk. Or we're close to the Norwegian border so you get an SMS uh, are you not uh, allowed to cross the border at the moment? It was pretty, pretty good actually. I don't know if you can see, but we just skied there twice. 
I'm definitely going back here. Yeah. We have yeah. to. It's really nice. Thanks for showing. More. Yeah. Thanks, that was amazing. Good. Nice yeah. day. I think the, the thing with pre-season training and overall with the start of the ski season is you kind of expect it to start in October, November, but then you, it doesn't really happen until December, January. The comp season is coming up in just a couple of weeks and uh, you start feeling like, oh, maybe I should have trained more, or maybe I should have more day on skis and done that and this, but uh, so it's, it's, um, it's stressful. Okay. What I enjoy doing as pre-season training is definitely a lot of mountain biking. I like running. I started swimming actually. That's really good training. Uh, and I was a really bad swimmer, so it's really nice to just feel you improving in something. Uh, and if I go to the gym, I like to go for a run and then run past the outdoor gym like this and do some exercise. I guess I'm, uh, I'm uh, not immune to stress. I, I maybe get as nervous as everyone else doing what I'm doing. Uh, but my strategy so far has been to take a step back and try to pretend that it, it doesn't bother me as much as it actually does. So uh, yeah, that's my number one go-to strategy for handling stress, I think. Take a step back. First competition is coming up in a few weeks. Of course, you never know if you're gonna feel 100% ready, but uh, after a day like today, I feel like I got a lot done. So a few more days like this, then I'll definitely be close to ready. Down, going huge there. 